y'all for tuning back in. It's your boy Pelican Bay K9 giving you that dog news the way I always do. Fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it. Some ain't hit them comments up. Don't forget to hit the like button up before you get up out of here. And uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. My my bulldoggers. My bulldoggers. Alright. Today we're gonna talk about one of the biggest, one of the best big dogs to exist. You know, alligator. But first, you know, I'm talking about a couple more things first. You know, when, when getting a new dog, when getting a new dog, just my opinion, you know, my style is no matter where I get the dog from, I get that dog a tune-up, what I call a tune-up. You know, if it's a puppy, if it's a grown dog, no matter what, when I get my dog, it's coming to a new area from where I'm bringing the, the puppy from or the grown dog from. It's coming to a new area. No matter if that person told me they gave shots, worm, this and that, whatever, I still do my own, you know, my own uh, little regimen of things. I get them. I make sure you got the, the, the shots eight ways or nine ways or ten ways with the Lyme disease. I make sure they wormed out, even even though know, if you say you wormed them. Not saying I don't believe you, but what I'm saying is, I have to keep my records, and my records start when I do it. You know, I, I like I, I have probably on, if I I could probably count on two or three fingers how many times I put a dog from another yard and brought it to my yard and just start taking care of it and then shooting those shots to like maybe a month, two months later. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I don't care how healthy it is. I get it. I got to make sure. You know, I'm, I'm protecting him from the stuff that's in the air, the stuff that's on the ground out here in this environment, especially when you come into a new environment, you know, because every place is, some places, uh, different uh, things build up immune, system, immune systems to fight those uh, vaccinations off to the point where the vaccinations ain't working for your dogs and different things, you know, because... They say they got a new Parvo strain out there that's stronger than the old ones back in the days. You know, and like different viruses, you know, just update themselves the same way a computer update themselves. So I always give my dog a tune-up, no matter the age, when I get them as a puppy. The next thing I'm going to touch up on is how to determine the pit weight. You know, some people you know uh, they can do this pretty easy. When others, you know, they can't just, they can't figure it out no matter what. You know, determining the dog pit weight. One thing I know, you know, my opinion, like I said before, you should always have your dog within four pounds, no more than four pounds, maybe five at the most, four or five pounds from show weight, you know. If, if, if he, uh, every, his everyday weight is 41 pounds, then you no, know, his show weight will probably be between 37, 38 pounds. You know, it just depends. Maybe 39. But if he's 41, you know, get, give yourself at least four pounds. But we're not talking about a fat 41. We're talking about 41 chain weight. I, you know, if you 50 pounds chain weight. And if you're not sloppily fat, but you just chain weight, then you'll see back down about 47, 46. You know, some people got the gift to look at a dog and, you know, can maybe if they can't tell the weight, they can see where the dog, can look at the dog and see how small it need to be, you know, compared to the weight that it is at that time. You know, a lot of, a lot of people got that eye for it. And... A lot of people think it's easy until they get up there and try to figure out the weight. Get up there and try to keep that weight steady. Keep this many pounds on them. Take that many pounds from them. And they're trying to do it on a daily basis, weekly basis, and monthly basis. And then they realize it ain't, it ain't as easy as they thought it was before they jumped off the porch. You know, so always, you know, uh, some people give themselves a pre-keep. They do a two-week pre-keep. You know, uh, to see what the dog weight is before they actually call the weight. 
So they'll cut a couple pounds down. You know what I'm saying? But uh, for the most part, if you deal with your dog a lot, you mess with him a lot, and he's not just on the back burner, you'll pretty much know what his pit weight is. You'll pretty much know what, you know, the weights, his weights, weight to the point where you could have, you know, could call him, call him out as, as needed, you know. But uh, for the ones who don't pay attention to him, just leave him on the chain, bring him out here and there, bring him out here and there. Them be the ones that call them weights, and then the weight might be two pounds too heavy than what they were supposed to call. Now they're going into a bigger dog than what that dog is, you know, now. That dog really can't, he can make the weight, but he still got fat on him now. But, uh, yeah, just, it's all about paying attention and getting the scale and putting the dog up there, looking at your dog, what, what, what he weigh right now. Put him on the scale. You know he weighed uh, 50 pounds. You've been weighing him for the last two weeks, and he only been from 50 to 51, back down to 49, and you ain't been trying to keep up with his weight. You just been feeding him regular. And he only been in between 49 to 51 in the last three weeks. You know, uh, then you pretty much know if you got to call his weight, because you know at any given time your dog is around 50 pounds. So you know if you need to call his weight, you look at him, and you know you give or take four pounds, and that, that'll put you back at 46, 47 pounds. You know, three pounds off, 47. And truthfully, you know, especially if you're going to be uh, showing your dog in different type of events, it's not healthy to keep your dog over five, six pounds over his show weight. Because it's not healthy to try to take all that weight off at one time when it's time to go to a show. You know, if your dog active, you ain't going to feel like taking all that weight off of him all the time. You're going to want to keep him at that, you know, pretty much at that weight. Maybe a pound or two over, you know, a little, little fat on him, just a tad bit, so you can knock that off. But you ain't going to want to keep taking all that weight off. So when your dog active, you keep him around five pounds, and you know, around that five pound mark. You know, and the thing is, we got to know what performance weight is, you know, what performance weight is and how to put one in top shape. If you know what per your dog's performance weight is and you know how to put them in tip-top shape, then you shouldn't have no problem, you know, unless you mess up on some other end of the, of the um, ball field. Another thing we need to know, gameness is not the willingness to fight. It's not the courage to, to uh, to kill, it, uh, it's the willingness to win. You know what I'm saying? It's the willingness to win. And oh, buddy, we don't know how game those dogs are until they have been in trouble. If you haven't seen your dog in trouble, then you need to, you need to just say your dog is a devastating knockoff machine. You know what I'm saying? He's just knocking everything off without getting in trouble. You know. If you've never seen him in trouble, you can't say he's game. You know, when you see him in trouble, then you see him react to that trouble. That's when you can start uh, tallying up his gameness. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and understand, an undernourished and unhealthy dog will not be game as a healthy dog. You know what I'm saying? You can't bring no dog out off the same bloodline, but he's undernourished and unhealthy and think he's going to perform like one off that same line. Maybe both of them has equal dogs. Both of them has the same equal qualities, but one is healthy and the other one isn't. You can't expect the one that isn't healthy to perform like the one that is healthy. You see the one that is healthy go two hours and then you think the one that isn't healthy, he can go two hours. You can't expect that off of him. He ain't got it in him. He got it in him genetically, but he ain't got it in him health-wise. Now, old schooler was quoted saying, back in the days, it was about the dogs and a little bit of money. You know, and, you know, the, the guy who was interviewing him asked him, what do you think changed? And his exact words was, drugs changed in the dog game. It wasn't. The drugs in the dog game, how the drugs is in the dog game now. And that goes back to what we all know. Once the drugs got involved, 
got the feds involved. Drugs got involved, you got killing involved. You got kidnapping involved. You, I don't know if any of y'all heard, but some of them dog men showed up at the shows and got kidnapped for their dogs, for their money, you know, with different things like that. You know, I'm not going to call no names, but, uh, you know, dog men had done been kidnapped at these dog shows. Uh, like I say, kill. Uh, we talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on betting. So now that we got the, uh, the, the attention of the drug police here, they go, they call the folk about the betting. Now you got the guns and killing and murder. So now you is where we at today. And boy, 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 them hypocrites is on Facebook. They own it. They've been, they, when my boy been out there selling them pure dogs, they was talking about how they mixing the dogs and making the better crosses. Now my boy ain't in the dogs. They, they, or they think, he, they think he don't got no dogs. Uh, they talking about how they breeding pure, 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 pure. But don't worry. Don't worry. You got, you going to have enough time where you can sell some of them pure dogs for folk on this side of town. You know what I'm saying? Sell some of them pure dogs for folk on this side of town and stop hating and, 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 and get up there and tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? Get up there and tell the truth about them lines and stop stop hating all the time and try to trying to knock what a man spent 30 and 40 years to create and you think you could come and mix up some kind of sauce in six months. Now I say for the new guys to start with the old school with you whatever killer you decide you like, whatever old school killer you dealing with, start from where he left off at. I said that, but I didn't say take that blood and try to start knocking that man. Cause if it weren't for that man, you wouldn't have the dog that you had to make the dogs that you making. So you can never knock the man you get your dog from. When you see a man doing that, you already know that his, his whole thing is a sales pitch. His whole thing is to try to get you to buy them puppets from him. And he don't care what you get. Like I said before, you're out there spending that money fast. Now I done told you them boys selling German shepherds out there. Them boys selling mixed breed um, bulldogs and pit bulls out there. They selling all kind of stuff out there. And they don't mind about your feelings. They give you them papers that say they off of, um, oh, this, this right here old Jeep Eli dog. Little do you know you got an old band dog. You got your old band dog. You got papers for Jeep and Eli. Them boys don't care. So be careful who you buy your, 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 your product from. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, do your research. Make sure it's a reputable dog man. You know, a dog man that can stand behind his, his his work, his product, his time that he put in on them dogs. And and uh, you know, you know, it's basically about being patient, man. Patience is the key to success. Patience is the key to success. Now let's talk about one of the greatest big dogs of all time, Plumber's Alligator. Okay. Now Alligator was born to Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams had Mr. Williams from Texas had alligator up until he was a little over a year old, and he kept him that long because he wanted to get some puppies off of him before he got rid of him, you know. But uh, uh, alligator was off Mr. Williams' satin lady dog, which was a scattered bred uh, carver dog, and not only scattered bred, she was a cold dog. He took that female and he bred her to um, the Tudor's uh, nigger dog. You know, to this nigga bitch. And, you know, I have to watch how I say that because it'll mess with my, my monetization. You know, I ain't even worried about, you know, saying the word. I'm worried about saying the word for them striking me on my, you know, on my channel. Because you have to watch them words, what you say. But, uh, yeah, he kept him till he was a year old. And then the plumbers got him. The plumbers, they were, they were known to be great, a great dog family. A great dog family. Now, Alligator had, you know, a bunch of great offspring out there. Uh, Hammond's Roof is wrong. He had uh, Plumber's Kiowa. She was a two-time winner. Grand Champion Tank. Um, Plumber's, Champion Plumber's Ebony. Champion Allen's Mag. Nigga bitch, she was a two-time winner. Two-time winner named Reckless Reckless Reba. And and Hammonds had a two-time winner named Batima. 
You know, when Alligator got a whole lot of offspring, you know, I'm just naming out some of the champions and grands and more notable dogs off of them. Now, let's talk about this real quick. In one of Gator's matches, which was his third match, champion match, a turn was made by the other dog who was Joker. The other dog name was Joker. Joker made a turn at 25 minutes. All right. Imagine what I'm telling you now. Joker made a turn at 25 minutes, but the handle wasn't made until 30 minutes later. It was 50, 52 minutes, somewhere in that area, before the handle was made. Okay, my question to y'all is, we talking 30 minutes in between turn, in between you picking your dog up and going to the corner. So we talking 30 minutes of both handlers being bent over them dogs. Because if I'm bending over my dog trying to make a good hold, I'm bringing attention to the referee that that handler ain't bent over trying to make a good handle for that dog. Look at the look at the um look at the handle the referee. You know what I'm saying? He ain't making he not making no attempt to handle his dog. Now this is what I'm saying. Know your dog because the reason that handle went 30 minutes is because somebody knew their dog. Whether it was the man on the bottom or the man at him on the top, somebody knew their dog and made bad handles. Unless neither dog let their grip go for 30 minutes. I'm talking about one hole, both dogs, 30 minutes. If it wasn't in that situation, then one man knew his dog and he wanted to let his dog do damage as much as he could without making that, you know, that complete hole, that complete handle to pull his dog up out of it, okay? Now, on another note, know your dog because if you see a man doing that, you got to get your dog up out of there if you see your dog taking damage. Don't think you seeing things because it looking like he missing handles, looking like he could have grabbed them, but he didn't. You are seeing seeing the right thing. He did miss that handle. He did. He could have grabbed that dog and got him up out of there, but he didn't. He, he want his dog to pound your dog, whether it's from the bottom or whether it's from the top. Back in those days, you know, that's why, you know, uh, when that particular match handled and the 30 minutes lapse in between the turn and the handle, it's because one man knew his dog. One man wanted his dog to do damage to the other one as long as he could without making that handle. You no, know, so know your dog, or you be thinking, you know, your dog doing something, and you know, uh, you ain't getting the scratches started early. Cause some people, if you know your dog the right way, know your dog the way you're supposed to know your dog, you might need to get the scratching started immediately. You know what I'm saying? You might got one that's gonna scratch all day, but he ain't wanna sit in there and go pound for pound with a gladiator. That's doing damage. And even if he will stay there, if you see him getting damaged, you want to get him up out of there. You know? And like I said, I'm talking about historical stuff. I'm talking about the alligator, you know, the alligator match right now, and that was before I was born. So, uh, yeah, but um, just know you, this is about knowing your dog inside out. Now, it was said that during Gator's days, in his era, there was only a handful of big dogs that could even compete with him, that could even make him sweat. And it was a whole bunch of big dogs during that time. But it was said during Gator's era, I mean era, you know, he was the cream of the crop. And the thing that made Gator so good is that not only was he a great dog, he produced a great family of dogs. It was said that the Gator dog was kind of equivalent to the Red Boy dog. Match it with anything. Match it with any line of dog and it goes good. You know, back in those days. I guess when Red Boy came around, it kind of shifted Gator back to the back. But and now, the thing is, which one of them dogs, more modern dogs, as far as breeding wise, shifts Red Boy to the back? To show that he's throwing off the game dogs that just won't and won't and won't and won't and won't. Because like I said before, you no. Know, 
the dogs that's producing better than Red Boy, the dogs that's producing better than Jeep, better than Mayday, better than Yellow, better than Eli, those dogs are out there right now living, but we don't know it. We don't know it because we're too busy focused on a pedigree. Too busy focused on trying to match a damn pedigree. But we'll get it together in a minute. We'll get it together in a minute. Now, I do want to show a couple of uh, Alligator's little mates and some of his, you know, offspring. Some more of his offspring pitches because, you, you know, uh, they don't have a lot of pitches on the online page. So when I do do my research and get the pitches, I like to post them. You know, all right. You got uh, Soko and Susan and Renee. Both of those are, are alligators' litter mates. And these next couple pictures, these are just some of the uh, offspring and descendants of alligator, pure alligator dogs. But I appreciate y'all for tuning in to this episode of the Dog News where we're talking about plumbers champion alligator you know and just bringing a little bit of them historical things out about plumbers alligator so y'all have a great day y'all have a safe night keep bulldogging stay legal out there pbk knives and i'm out